Miriam Defensor Santiago, a former senator and thrice a presidential candidate, was an unparalleled force in the legal and political fields in the Philippines. Known for her tenacious fight against cronyism, oligarchy, political dynasties, and corruption, Miss Santiago was a beacon of reform in a challenging political landscape. Her indomitable spirit and charisma persistently checked governmental power abuses, and her legacy is one that is unlikely to be matched in the Philippines. Yet the public's understanding of Santiago's accomplishments often focuses on her tenure as a senator, a judge, a professor, and a judge for the International Criminal Court. These, however, are merely facets of her illustrious career. The depth of Santiago's achievement spans much further back in history, persisting even in the face of criticism from her adversaries entrenched in corruption. Her receipt of the Quezon Service Cross, making her the first and only woman to receive the country's highest honor, underscores her substantial contribution to the nation. Known as the Dragon Lady of the Philippines and the Iron Lady of Asia, Santiago's life and work deserve in-depth understanding and appreciation. Her indelible mark on the political landscape continues to reverberate to this day. Miriam Defensor Santiago's educational prowess stands as an exemplar among Filipino politicians, many of whom owe their positions to elitist systems. She completed her undergraduate studies in political science in the Philippines and furthered her education at the University of Michigan, where she pursued postgraduate and doctoral degrees, specializing in law and juridical science. In addition to her impressive academic achievements, she dedicated a decade to teaching law at the University of the Philippines Diliman, illuminating minds during evening classes. Her professional life was equally remarkable. Following her advanced studies abroad, Santiago served as a special assistant to the Secretary of Justice for a decade. She also held the position of a legal officer for the United Nations High Commission for Refugees in Geneva, Switzerland. During the Philippine martial law, she made history as the youngest judge to be appointed to the Regional Trial Court of Quezon City. post martial law, President Aquino appointed her as the Commissioner of the Bureau of Immigration and Deportation. This was soon followed by a promotion to the position of Secretary of Agrarian Reform in the Aquino administration. Santiago's political ambitions led her to run for the presidential seat in 1992, but she narrowly lost to Fidel V. Ramos. Despite this setback, Santiago was elected as a senator in 1995, marking her first term as a key figure in the governance of the Philippines. She made another unsuccessful bid for the presidency in 1998, losing to Joseph Estrada. However, Santiago's political career was far from over. From 2004 to 2016, she served as a seasoned senator and made a final run for the presidency in 2016. Tragically, her life was cut short due to lung cancer, marking the end of a remarkable journey of a woman whose influence on the Philippine political landscape continues to be felt. Miriam Santiago Defensor's illustrious career, although brief, was nothing short of magnificent. Yet, to fully appreciate her achievements, we must delve into the essence of her life's work. Two distinct facets stand out, her relentless fight against corruption and her drive for progressive policies. Her battle against corruption revolved around addressing systemic loopholes and advocating for transparency. She worked tirelessly to ensure that the management and allocation of government funds were transparent. In a speech in July 2013, Senator Santiago asserted that history shows that corrupt governments have always sought to limit transparency. She believed that the control of information was integral to sustaining political power. Moreover, she encouraged members of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants to hold elected public officials accountable, demonstrating her commitment to a corruption-free governance. However, Senator Santiago's fight against corruption wasn't limited to high-level politics. A New York Times article from May 1988 highlights how, from her very first day as the Commissioner of Immigration, Santiago embarked on a mission to cleanse one of Southeast Asia's most corrupt agencies. She waged a war against immigration payoffs, foreign-led crime syndicates, and most notably, the infamous Yakuza. She challenged these syndicates head-on, exposing their involvement in gun running, drug smuggling, illegal alienation programs, and document counterfeiting. 
At the age of 42, Santiago took the helm of the Immigration Commission amidst an array of death threats. Yet her determination remained unscathed. She swiftly restructured the agency, which ultimately led to a significant reduction in corruption. Her audacious efforts were recognized globally, and she was awarded the Magsaysay Award for her bold and moral leadership in transforming a graft-ridden government agency. However, Santiago's fight against corruption was just one aspect of her dynamic political career. She also championed numerous forward-thinking policies that greatly benefited the Philippines. One of her significant stances was in favor of constitutional reforms. She believed in the importance of attracting foreign investments to the Philippines and suggested that high-ranking government positions should require a college degree. At the time of her speech in 2013, she pointed out that many politicians in the country had only completed high school or even just elementary education. Santiago was also a formidable opponent of the Philippines' political dynasty culture. During her third presidential campaign in 2016, she promised to prohibit relatives from running for public office simultaneously, whether in the same province, city, municipality, or for national positions. However, even before her presidential bid, she was known for actively challenging the entrenched political dynasties. From an economic and environmental standpoint, Santiago opposed mining practices. She argued that most profits from mining were being drained from the local economy, leaving small villages at a disadvantage. Additionally, she stressed the destructive impact of mining on both the Philippine society and its ecosystem. Perhaps one of her most notable advocacies was her vision for an improved transportation system. She proposed a new railway system connecting Metro Manila to Sorsogon and a high-speed transit system within the capital region. Beyond these, she also pushed for a modernized airport and the initiation of various development projects across the Philippines. Aside from her staunch stand against corruption and her vigorous push for infrastructure development, Senator Santiago has accomplished a plethora of other significant feats. Renowned for her unyielding work discipline, Santiago set the bar high during her tenure. She holds the record for filing the most substantial number of bills among her contemporaries, a testament to her unparalleled productivity and diligence. These legislative proposals tackled a broad spectrum of pivotal issues, including corruption, economic growth, education reform, and social justice advocacy. One of Santiago's most achievements aside from corruption and the like as a senator was her role in drafting the Philippines' Reproductive Health Law, a landmark piece of legislation that provided universal access to methods of contraception, fertility control, sexual education, and maternal care. Despite facing stiff opposition from various sectors, Santiago argued passionately for the bill, believing it was essential to improving the lives of women and families, particularly those from lower-income households. Santiago also played a pivotal role in the passage of the Philippine Act on Crimes Against International Humanitarian Law, which serves as the country's legal framework for addressing war crimes, genocide, and crimes against humanity. This further demonstrated her commitment to upholding human rights and international law. In the realm of education, Santiago was a staunch advocate. She authored the Unified Student Financial Assistance System for Tertiary Education Act, aiming to establish a comprehensive and unified student financial assistance system for tertiary education in the country. She believed that access to quality education was a key driver in uplifting the lives of Filipinos and fostering national development. As chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, Santiago worked tirelessly to strengthen the Philippines' relations with other countries. She sought to promote peace, mutual respect, and cooperation in the international community. Her experience as a legal officer at the United Nations High Commission for Refugees in Geneva was instrumental in her leadership of the committee. Santiago was also a tireless advocate for the environment. She championed the Climate Change Act of 2009, which established the Climate Change Commission responsible for coordinating, monitoring, and evaluating government programs aimed at addressing climate change issues. Throughout her years as a senator, Santiago's fiery speeches and sharp wit became a fixture in the Senate, earning her both admirers and critics. Yet beyond her charismatic persona, Santiago was a legislator of substance, a champion of the people, and an advocate of good governance. 
Her unyielding commitment to truth, justice, and the rule of law has left an indelible mark on Philippine politics and legislation. Even after her passing, Miriam Defensor Santiago's legacy as a senator continues to inspire and guide the nation. Her feat in time as a senator was amongst the best, if not already the best, who other than Miriam Santiago have been undergoing threats and pressure from elitism, yet at the same time succeed in ways unseen. No wonder she has so many enemies in the realm of politics. But anyway, let us know down below. Thanks for watching.